Okay, guys, let's talk today about the source of capital. The source of capital. How the entrepreneur can manage to get his his own fund when he wants to start his own when he wants to start his own business. The source of the capital for the new startup business. It starts by the examine the forecast or by examine the projections. Projections here means forecast. How to predict, how to anticipate. The cash flow statement. It turns out to be understandable how much the capital will be required at what time. So the entrepreneurs here may perhaps make up the available some of the required capital and friends. It might be from friends, might be from families, it might be from the bank itself. The entrepreneur can sometimes go to the bank and ask for the loan. This loan can be uh, granted by some documents or some documentation. But in case also the entrepreneur need to put in case some fund and some debit and some uh, down payment and there will be a deduction also but it's a long procedure and some of the scholars that they prevent or prohibited that take a bad, the loan from the bank. So the government can grant and bootstrapping without no help can also as well contribute to the needed capital to start on the undertaking. Here also the government can support the entrepreneurs, the new entrepreneurs by uh, giving some money, especially for those who are not able to sponsor their own, their own, their own uh, investment. So characteristically, uh, the number of phases of investment will be required over the existence of the business, over the existence of the business. So in order actually to look at the capital source, small business owners ought to comprehend the diverse sources of funds that are presented to them, such as the following. Capital produced internally, capital obtainable from trade creditors, borrowed money, sale of the ownership interest in the business to the equity investors. What does it that mean? In order for the entrepreneur to collect his capitals or source of money, there are actually several ways that the entrepreneurs can contribute. First, the capital produced internally. The capital produced internally. Some of the business, they start up with the small money as they have their own capital, as they have their own capital. But this capital is somehow increased internally in the company while the day-to-day uh, -day organization having its own work. So the money uh, produced from the company itself while it's functioning. The capital obtainable from the trade creditors. As I've told you, there's some government's bodies or some creditors, they give money to the new startup business for those people who want to start their own money and for those people who want to start a business, especially with small business. Borrowed money, you can still borrow money from your friends, from family, from any creditors or from any debitors that they might contribute with your own investment. But it's somehow risky and you need to let the people involved with your investment. 
or you need to sell the ownership interest in the business to the equity investors. So here you need to sell or let people involve with your own with your own business by giving them a part or a portion in your in your in your um, funds or profits. Reasons for additional capital needs. Development opportunities such as a decision to open a new branch or add a new product or increase the capacity. Another reason for additional capital needs, cost saving opportunities such as the equipment acquisition that will lessen the production's cost or trim down the operating expenses. Opportunities to apprehend the significant savings by taking the benefits of the size discounts on the purchase for inventory or building inventories prior to the a supplier's price increase. So actually seasonal aspects where the investors have to put together prior to the selling season sets in a motion and receivables possibility that will not be collected until the 30 or to 60 days subsequent to the conclusion of the selling season. So, also another reason is the existing settlement of the obligations or amount overdue may well call for the additional cash than it is straight away in hand. Another reason is the local or national economic circumstances which cause sales and profit to fall monetarily. So here it happens that the national economy it might have the, ca the catastrophic or catalytic here, the term, I want you to know about this term, the catalyst in the business means when the economy have a, have a sudden uh, increase or sudden fall. This one uh, called catalyst. The financial hitches, barriers of the customers that cause them to shell out bit by bit and slower than expected. Also, failure to keep hold of the adequate earning in the business. Some of the entrepreneurs, actually, they fail to keep their money or their savings in the business. And also, they have a lack of concentrations to assess the management by or may perhaps have a sanctions investors or account receivable to get out of the hand. So... Also, another reason to have an additional capital needs is to have the uh, company sanctions obliged by the, by the government. So the sanctions might be applied by the government so that in case the, the investors need extra, extra money. Debit financing. It's a strategy that engages loan money from a lender or financer. It's actually as it is in the picture. You are getting money from a debitor, or you are getting money from the bank, or you are getting money from the uh, loan, or you are getting money from a family, but you still, you still, this money is not yours. You still have some barriers on this money. You still have some obstacles. You are still bound. You are still bound to this money. You are still bound to this money. You cannot get rid of this money until you settle the payment. So, it is technique of financing in which the business obtains a loan or offers it is guaranteed. To pay back the the loan so in some cases the bank or the debitor or the uh, 
they offer to the customers some boundaries, some uh, guarantee. The uh, debtor or the creditor need to have fulfilled some documentation in order for him to apply for a loan. So, in majority cases, debit financing does not comprise any conditions for the ownership of the company. As the alternative, small businesses that make use of the debit financing acknowledge a direct responsibility to pay back the finance within the definite period of time. Of course, there will be a definite period of time. You need to settle the loan within this period of time, but make sure not to late in the payment. In case of late payment, in case of late payment, the the, 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 the debtor, the debtor will uh, arrange for some fines and some sanctions. It might end up with the with the court. So the interest rate uh, applicable here on the the loan debt finance reveals the intensity of risk that the lender assumes by granting by granting the funds. What are the types of the debit financing? What are the types of debit financing? Working capital loan. Working capital loan. It's a loan taken by bank. Okay. It's a loan granted by the bank with some guarantee. Overdraft is a loan taken by bank but without an account number. So it might be by chic. Factoring is also a loan taken by the factories, by the big factories. Commercial papers, commercial paper or CPS. Commercial papers, as you take a loan by the bank by giving them the right to access to your, to your commercial commodities. The term loans, the term loans is a loan taken for the long period of time, for the long period of time. Syndicated loans, syndicated loans. It's a loans taken by the labor, by the labor, by the labor uh, market. Project finance, and we have the debitures, and we have the inter-corporate deposits, uh, we have the personal loans. This deposit is the uh, deposit uh, settled by the bank. And this money that you deposit into the bank, you are not popular, you are not uh, allowed to withdraw this money within a certain period of time, frameworked by the by the company itself. So what are the pros and cons? What are the pros and cons of the debt financing? So the pros is the pros that the advantages is the independence, tax benefits and discipline. The independence as long as you take uh, as long as you take the the money from the bank and you are fully independent on your business. So as long as you pay the money on time, as long as you settle the amount of money within the frame period of time, you are free. Tax benefits. As long as you are paying tax to the government related to the business, you will get some benefits related to the infrastructure to the to the company discipline there as a discipline means here you are obliged by rules and regulations and constitutions that you need to pay the money within the frame period of time what are the con settlement interest rate collaterals and guarantees a settlement, 
you need to have some interest rate on the on the amount of money that you are taking from the bank several banks they have their own percentages of the of the of the rate or of the interest rate some of the banks here like rhb they take 7% of the interest others bank like cimb like h HSBC, they take a percentage of the interest loan, they take around 11%, which is a bit and quite high comparing to others, to other banks. The guarantees, of course, if you are want to plan to take, uh, take uh, money from the bank, you should have the guarantor ready to sign and give his documentation in case you run away from the money and you didn't pay the bank on time and settle the payment here actually they will come and run after the guarantor they will come and run after the guarantor as he guarantee you so as for these cases it's not easy to get the guarantor what is the equity finance? Equity finance is the money hoisted for the company actions by trading common or preferred stock to the individual or institutional financiers. So the equity finance is a system of rising share capital from outside investors in return for handling over a share of the business. So this may will require several structures comprising a share of project, comprising a share of prospect profits. However, it is most commonly connected with the sharing, the position of the business to some extent. So it's a money hoisted for the company actions by trading the common or preferred stock in the individual or institutional financiers so it's somehow how to raise the share capital get it by the outsiders investors for them to give you back the uh, money with a little or with the agreed percentage for for the profit Contributors of the equity finance, venture capitalists and business angels. Venture capitalists, a venture capitalist is the individual who puts in money in a business undertaking or offering funds for startup or growth business. So normally the uh, ventures capitalists is they are individuals. They are individuals. They are interested to invest some money in a certain startup business. Okay. For the business angels are uh, in are uh, affluent and wealthy individuals who invest their personal capital in the startup companies. So. The business angels, actually, they are famous people. They are very, very rich people. They go after and search for companies that they need a capital to start their own business. And they invest this money within certain of business. Rewards of the equity finance. The financial support is dedicated to the business and its proposed projects. The investors here only take in their ventures if the business is performing fighting fit. So here the uh, supporters of this certain or particular business, they come and help into this business in case of the project itself is fighting fit. So the correct trade angels and ventures capitalists, they can transport important expertise, connections, and know 
how to do business they can furthermore support with the strategy and key decision making. So the actually the trade angels and the capitalists they are not actually only interested to give their money to the startup business but as long as they can also contribute with the management part of the company as well as giving the decisions, sharing the ideas, the thoughts and so on and so forth. So the finances here are time and gain equip, are time and gain equip to offer the follow up financial support as the business matures. So as the business goes up, as the business grows up, the financiers and supporters, they still give the business until the start up business point, it ends. What is the shortcoming of the equity finance? The hoisting equity finance is challenging, expensive, and time consuming. Of course, if you want to arrange with the capitalists, if you want to arrange with the joint ventures, if you want to arrange with the supporters, if you want to arrange with those people who will invest in your company, it's a time consuming. It's a challenging and it's a bit risk and it is involving with your own capital. So depending on the financer, the entrepreneur will lose a certain amount of his authority to formulate the administrative decisions. So depending on the financer, the equity finance, as I've told you, the entrepreneur will lose the power of controlling his own business. And there will be some double standards with the managing the company, decisions and rules and regulations. So the entrepreneur will have to endo or will have to in down payment, give the administration time to make the available standards information for the financer to scrutinize. The initially, Financer will have a leaser allocation in the business together with this percentage and in the total financial expressions. On the other hand, the considered share may possibly develop into a lot of more value in the total financial expansions in the event of the venture becoming more flourishing. So there can be lawful and regulatory concerns to the act in accordance with the wireless raising finance. For example, when the promoting the investments. So we can see that some of the disadvantages of having the financiers or supporters or uh, capitalists, there will be a direct involve and colliedness with your own business as long as you are doing a great business as long as they are getting a high profit and they keep push you up to still give money to them what is the personal funds what is the personal funds personal finance are the least pricey in expressions of the cost and control. Personal fine. If you have $1,000, start up a business is a good. You might depend on this money to start your own small, small business. But as long as you are depending on your money and you are not getting money from any financiers, you are safe and sound and you have full control on your business. So they are, in addition, indispensable in being a magnet for the external financial support. So the characteristic source of the comprised savings, life insurance or mortgage of the house or the car. 
So the external investors wish for the entrepreneur to demonstrate the economic assurance. The economic assurance. It is not the quantity, but the reality is that the, all the dues accessible are dedicated that makes the external investors feel content and satisfied. So the external investors, as long as you pay the money on time, whether for the bank and you are paying the money for others' parties on time and you give them the percentage profit that they have been agreed for, they are fully satisfied and content. Family and friends also could be considered as a part of the funding. The relations, the acquaintances are the universal springs of the funds. As long as you are having a very good acquaintances, relationships with others, families and other members, maybe it could be a government bodies, so here the family and friends make available a small sum of quantity financial support for the new ventures. So the entrepreneur ought to present the affirmative and the downbeat features and the nature of the risks of the investment. So the entrepreneur ought to uh, uh, watchfully judge the impact of the investment on the family member or friends prior to its its received you, uh, when you want to take a money from the people whether these people they are in charge whether these people they are bodies in the government whether these families friends you need to make your own investigation on this certain or particular individuals in order for you to be a safe prior to receive this money. What is the research and development limited partnership? A kind of partnership committed to the research and development of the new product and services. So this form of partnership is made up of the limited partners who will put in finance and to pay for the certain research and development openings and prospects. So this limited partnership, there are people in, in there are individuals, they are in charge to pay your own research investment funds. So the partners offering the financial support are allowed to percentage of the profits delivered or derived from the comes from the invested money. What is the chief footman's or what is the chief basics of research and development limited partnership? The three mechanisms are contract, sponsoring company, and limited partnership. So the contract, of course, when you want to have a partnership, you need to sign a contract with terms and conditions. The another uh, mechanism for the partnership limited is the sponsoring company. A sponsoring company here it equals or it works as the competitors or as the guarantors that will guarantee your own uh, partnership with the another party. The limited partnership is to have a company but limited within the framework of the government sets the rules and regulations. So you are limited, you are bounded to the rules and regulations set by the government that have been agreed in the company. Bootstrapping financing. Bootstrapping financing means using the entrepreneur's personal funds or resources. So, it decreases the reliance on investors and banks. Why they call it bootstrap? Because it is the same when you want to tie your shoe. You depend on your own self. 
So you cannot tie your shoe and asking people to tie your shoe. You need to tie your shoe by yourself. That's why they call it bootstrapping financing. So it helps to decrease the dependency on the investors and financiers. So it's regarded as the reasonably priced alternative and also ensure the most favorable funding management. So it is also addition that makes the business extra valuable. The money you get, the money you value later on. The furthermore, there is no interest that it is required to be paid. There is no interest that is required to be paid. There is no tax, there is no interest rate, there is no percentages, and so on. What are the types? What are the types of boots stray financing? What are the types of boot stray financing? We have one, two, three, four, five types of boot scraping financing. Here there, there's a title, the topic of this slide has been erased. So I will write for you. I will write for you guys. I will write for you guys the title the title of the of the It's supposed to be like this. It's supposed to have the title here. Uh, the types of boost, bootstrap financing. We have the factoring. I've explained to you this factoring. We have the trade credit. Those people who work in trade, but they give you credit. They give you money to start up with your own business. We have the customers. You will have some debt from the customers. As long as you give them the debt, they keep on buying the uh, particular product from your company. The real estate, you can also have a contract with the properties, with the real estate agents. Sometimes they can offer you uh, or they, they can sometimes work as creditors, as a creditors. They give you, they give you money to start up with your own business. Leasing, get your property to someone. Leasing means uh, leasing or rent. It is same, uh, lease or rent. It can be lease fee means sell your, sell your, uh, sell your property. Rent means let your someone rent and pay the monthly deposit for you. So these are the types of the bootstrapping financing. Okay, guys, these are the references for you to if you need further and more information on our topic today. You can refer to this one of these slides in the in the future thank you very much and see you next class bye bye